Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in the series Go Time, and it's always go time for us as Christians as we go make disciples, as we witness to his greatness and glory, as we live as ambassadors of reconciliation for people to be reconciled to him and to one another. Today's message is a powerful one and an important one. It's this. It's time to live with integrity, which means we're truly living the Christian life. If we say we're Christian, that everything that Jesus says for us to do and how to live is what we're actually doing as we represent him to a world. And that'll be the light and salt that people are drawn to. One of the biggest complaints about the church is that it's full of hypocrites. They're full of people who really don't care about others. They only care about themselves. So today we're going to address that issue. So if you have your Bible, look up Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 30 into chapter 10, verse 4. And Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 23. And we'll hear Jesus call the Pharisees hypocrites because they... They lived two-faced. They didn't really represent God very well. When we live with integrity, our relationship with God will be so filled with riches. It's, it's good for us, but we're talking about how we need to do it to be good for others so that they see the love and the kindness and the grace and the power of God at work in us. So check it out. Hi, and welcome. Katrina Watkins here. You're back with another powerful message with First Lutheran Church. Do me a favor. If you're joining us live on Facebook, like and share this message so that your friends and family can be blessed all week long by today's message. This Monday is a national holiday. It's Labor Day. As we take time to rest and thank God for our occupations and jobs that give us an opportunity to serve Him. Take time to rest with your family and enjoy. The church office will be closed. Monday evening, Better Man is going to be canceled until next Monday, September the 9th. Enjoy your day, fellas. Women's Bible Study will be coming back on September the 3rd on Tuesday because church offices will be closed on Monday. So we are gonna be finishing Crossing the Waters. All women are invited. We'll see you in the church Narthex at six o'clock. 180 is still seeking out volunteers. In particular, we are looking for people who are able to drive and help pick up students and help take students home. Also, we're looking for kitchen help. If you wanna engage in any way, in helping us with our youth ministry, contact Pastor Anthony and he can get you connected. LWML is still collecting diapers sizes three and up, wipes and bottles through September the 15th. Our local choir that sings at several services each month will begin practices Sunday, September the 8th. They practice at 745 each Sunday. We welcome new singers to join us. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. See you there. We will be serving September the 9th at the Jackson House. If you are interested in helping with this ministry, contact Linda Colley and she can get you locked in. Whether you are visiting or whether you are a member, we'd love to know that you're worshiping with us. Fill out that connect card and let us know if there's any way that we can pray for you or if you have any needs that we can fulfill. It looks like it's time to get started. Pastor John, take it away. More go time. Did you know almost all scripture is about the go time? A lot of it's about the gospel. It's about, about his go time. But he was always talking to the people about their go time, representing him to a world in need of him. That's why we're spending all this time. We could keep going and going and going. There's so many scriptures about what God is saying to us about our life in him and how it's here for them out there to represent him. And so we're going to talk about this. It's time to live with integrity. Anybody know what integrity is? Integrity is I am who I say I am. And that's how I live. In my life in you. 
Integrity means to live with clean hands and a pure heart. The inside and the outside, they match. If I say I'm a Christian, then that's what people are going to see in me. Christ. Did you know Christian means to be a little Christ? It really means I am a possession of His. I belong to Jesus. And so to live with integrity means that the faith in Jesus we confess with our lips actually matches the life that we are living out daily in Him. It's called integrity. I have a word for it. It's in the, it's in the Scripture, and it's also in your dictionary. That's integrity. It's really an aspect of character. It's a part of who I am deep down inside in my soul. It's that character. Integrity means to live in the truth and by the truth. In the truth is what you say. I'm looking for realness of what you say. That's, I'm living in truth. I'm looking for what you say. But then that's what I'm doing. Whatever you say. Love your enemies. Well, come on, where are they? I need to give them a hug. You see? Bless those who persecute you. Bless them. There's so much to how this goes. Living in the truth by the truth. Integrity is described this way in 1 John chapter 1. Many of part of our liturgy that we often use in the early service. <laughs> It says this, if we walk in the light, which is out in the open, we're not hiding things in the dark and pretending like it didn't happen. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus purifies us, cleanses us from all sin. When we're walking in the light, when we're not trying to cover and be somebody that we're really not and we're trying to fake it as we go through life. When we walk in the light as he is in the light, it's not perfection, it's integrity and it's truth. I'm not trying to fake it. Man, then it's good. But it says if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We throw in truth away. And here's the worst one. If we claim that we have not sinned when we have. I didn't do it. No. You're wrong. What we do is we make God out to be a liar. We're, sh we're saying, this is my life, he's the liar. And then it says, his word has no place in our lives. I think that is on the board of being we're going to singe our soul by living in the lie, by trying to cover up and say, no, I'm right, I'm good, I didn't do that. And all the time we're saying to you, it's not what you say, it's what I say. That's why these things are so important, it, it affects us. And living that way never works. Anybody ever notice that? You can fool some of the people some of the time, but really less of the people than you think you are. And you never fool God. And then once it comes out, everybody looks and says, wow, you've lived that whole time with that lie. Who are you really? See, that's when we're in the truth. We can say, oh, I was wrong. I'm so, so sorry. That's integrity. They go, man, you're a person I can trust because you're not hiding stuff. That's why integrity is so important. Listen to these promises that God makes with integrity. It's a good thing. Oh, I want you to hold on because the really good stuff comes at the end. Okay? Just, just hang in there. This is what God says about integrity. First Kings chapter 9, God says to Solomon, As for you, if you walk before me in integrity of heart and uprightness. See, uprightness is the integrity of heart that comes out. 
If you'll just do that as David your father did, and do all that I command and observe my decrees and my laws, if you follow what I say and living this way in me, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. He's talking to Solomon. And the promise is this. If you just do this, I will bless you. Not only will I bless you, I will bless your family. Wait a second. Not only that, I will bless nations of people because of you and through you. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9, it says this. The man of integrity walks securely. Nothing to fear. But he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Everyone will see it. They're trying to fake it, but it's all going to come out. If you walk in integrity, he says, nothing can touch you. See, that's what integrity does. Very next chapter, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright guides them. Good paths. Wonderful places. But the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. All right, time for an English lesson. What does duplicity mean? It means you're doing two things at once. See, you're saying, oh, I'm good, but I'm really not good over in this life. I'm covering up. I'm trying to go two ways, and there aren't two ways to go. Duplicity won't work. It's, I'm with you, or I'm not. So duplicity, it doesn't work. And this is why this is important. One is because who wants to be blessed? Yeah. Who wants a good relationship with God? Come on. That alone should say, yeah, I'm going to do it. I want integrity. I'm going to live in integrity. But the third thing is this. It affects our witness. And that's the only reason why we're still here. It's why God doesn't bring us to faith and quick take us home before we blow it. Or before we start giving out a bad witness. He wants to bring us up in this faith and life that we show the world and we're living a salt and light and we're living in the open. And they say, man, I want what you got. That's the reason we're here. And integrity is so important to our witness. Let me tell you this. This is a right now message because do you know what kind of reputation the church has? It's not a good one. They're not walking in integrity. All they do is care about themselves. And when I'm in the Word, I say, Lord, you took care of me. And I thank you. And out of me comes this great love and all this good stuff because you. And I don't care about me no more because I'm caring about others like you want me to because I see them like you do. Integrity is what witnesses to people that we got something and they are drawn to it. It's really what the Lord was stressing in Deuteronomy chapter 4. You have to understand the children of Israel are now about to enter the promised land. They did not do well on the 40-year journey. A lot of them didn't make it. They were grumbling and griping, and it was all about themselves, and they died along the way. And now this new generation is ready to go in. And the Lord says this through Moses. Now Israel, hear the decrees and the laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and take possession of the land I am giving you. I want to give it to you. It's going to be me. I will drive out the nations. I will do it all. And he says this, do not add to what I command and do not subtract from it. This is where a lot of people get into trouble. They add to what God said. I explained it this way in the first service. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to have a cross up front. Did you know that? 
To me, it's not a bad idea. But to say that God said that, and you got to do certain things that he really didn't say, that's, that's adding to his word. That's putting words in God's mouth. He said, don't do that. But also, don't distract from it. Don't subtract. When I say, don't do this, don't do it. If I say it's sin, it really is sin. And that's another way that I think we're not witnessing real well with our lives. We're, we're pretending like, oh God, you just want to forgive all our sins. It really doesn't matter how I live. We just blend in with everything we do that shows there's something missing. And so God says, don't add to it, but don't subtract from it either. It's my word. My word is me. When you're walking in my word, you're walking in me, and you're showing the world who I am, because Jesus says, I am the word made flesh. It's how he lived. It's what he did. It's a gift. He says, but keep the commands I, the Lord your God, give you. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations. How you live is going to show the world who I am through you. And they will hear about all the righteous decrees, and they'll see the way that you're living. And they will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their God near them whenever they pray to him? They're watching how God just interacts with his people and blesses them and shows up when they pray and they seek his face. And this is the kind of relationship he wants, and he's drawing them to want it as well. And he says also, and what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws I'm setting before you this day? They will look at the way they live that not only honors God, but honors each other, that blesses each other. You know, it really gets down to this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. If that sounds bad, you're probably in the wrong place. Because he is everything. And love your neighbor as yourself. They're your brothers and sisters. He, he wants them all. Or to love them as I have loved you is the way Jesus gave the new command. Because you did that for me. How can I not do that for others? Unless I'm living in duplicity that says, oh, I believe that, but I ain't doing it. See, the danger is we end up thinking we're great and he's not so great. And that we're, we're better than other people and we just want what we want. You see, that's what was going on with the, the children of Israel later. You know, he's telling them before you get there, this is so important because it's really not about you, it's about you and then everyone else. You're going to be a light to the Gentiles. I really want the whole world. That's why he made the world. He didn't say, well, I just want this little certain group of people over in this other part of the world, and I'm just going to destroy everybody else. I don't like them. They're not as good as you. He says, no, you're going to be a light to the Gentiles. You're going to be the honey that draws the honeybees. You're going to be like a big chocolate cake just sitting out there. That would get me. There's a purpose. See, God loves to show off through people. He, wants, he, want, he gets greater glory when he uses us. Because I bless them, I show them, they follow me, they walk with me. And that's how everybody's going to get it. I'm not going to appear in the clouds and say, I'm a cloud here and I'm a fire here and you'll see these things. I want people just to behold my goodness in you. I want people to come in contact with my presence in you. And they get the real deal through you. 
Again, the Lord wanted them to get it. And they're going into the promised land. But they messed it up. What Paul addresses here in Romans 9 and, and 10, he says, What then shall we say? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness, they were not good people. They were messing up all the time. They were pagan. They were unbelievers doing all the sinful things out in the world. He said they did not pursue righteousness, but they have attained it. Righteousness that is by faith, that is pure gift. It's all Him. But the people of Israel who pursued the law as a way of righteousness have not attained their goal. They said, I'm going to do it on my own. That's the law. I'm going to make it about me and say, look at me. Instead of saying, I'm looking at you, and they're going to see you. So why not have they have tamed it? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if it were by works. It's by what I do so that I can say, look at me. I'm such a good person. I come to church three times a month, and I do this, and I do that. Look at me. I'm so great. I did it. You're not so good because you didn't do it. I'm better than you. See, that's what self-righteousness does. That's what righteousness by the law. It looks down on everyone else instead of saying, there but by the grace of God go I. The only reason I'm here is because he found me. And he gave me a gift that I could not earn. It's just great love. It's just grace. It's a place in his family. See, the children of Israel had turned it and made it all about, I'm somebody because of me. I'm the greatest instead of you're the greatest. That's all about you. He says they stumbled over the stumbling stone. It's Jesus. He says, my heart and desires, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for the Israelites so that they might be saved. He says they're not. Because they're trying to do it themselves based on their own works to say, look at me, I'm somebody. Instead of surrendering and saying, no, Lord, I need you, and it's all you. See, we're all saved the same by grace through faith. It's what he's been saying throughout his word. They sought to establish their own righteousness rather than submit to God's, which is in Christ. And he is a culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. You see, the whole thing is salvation is from the inside out. It's how the Gentiles got it. And it's how the people of Israel lost it. They couldn't understand. It's him who comes to make dead people alive. It's all gift. It's why he told them, when you get to the promised land, don't say, my right hand did this. I acquired all this myself. This is my money. This is my stuff. Look at me. I did good. I studied hard. I made a name for myself. I did it myself. If you only did what I did, then, then you'd have a good life too. No, it's all been gift for a purpose of showing the greatness of God. That he alone is worthy to be praised. And in him, he will lead you and guide you on solid ground and take you places you never dreamed possible when you walk in it as gift from the great giver of all things. That's how we get to know him as he really is. This is what integrity, integrity reveals. It reveals the greatness of God. And that's what draws people to him. And it's really what Jesus was talking about in Mark chapter 7. So this, he lays it out so beautifully. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they were the Israel's elite 
teachers and the ones who really made it about themselves. They walked around showing off all their stuff, how holy I am, how good I am on my own. I do it right. You do it wrong. You better bow before me when I walk by. They were all about themselves. And when some of the, they saw some of the Jesus' disciples eating food with hands that were defiled and unwashed, they get upset. Now, wait a second. Is it a bad thing to wash your hands before you eat? No. But guess what? Small children put their hands in their mouth all the time after eating dirt, and they're fine. But when you have an unclean heart, you can wash your hands all the time and you're so unclean on the inside and you're dead and dying and being corrupted. It's the heart. People want to focus on the outside instead of the inside. And the issue is they had a tradition where they'd give their hands a ceremonial washing. Hardly any water probably even had to touch their hands. They had to make a show of it. And then when they'd come back from the marketplace, because their tradition was this, that if they touched something a Gentile touched before them, then they would become unclean. It's kind of like cooties. (laughs) I forget. Who had cooties? Was it the girls who had the cooties or the boys had cooties? The girls? That's the game they're playing. It's cooties. They forgot that they were to be a light to the Gentiles. I said, oh, they're bad. I'm gonna, don't do, don't, you're so bad, don't even touch them. Just stay away from them. Else you might get some of their stuff. They'd made up all these homemade rules. They threw away God's commands, and they had their own rules. So Jesus said, He said this, Isaiah was right about you, you hypocrites. Anybody know what a hypocrite is? Not good, right? Says one thing, does another. Not being real, not walking it out. Who wants to be called a hypocrite? All right. How about this? Who wants to be called a hypocrite by Jesus? No. But that's what he says. You're really hypocrites. You're pretending like you're really religious representing the Father, but you're nowhere near it because you've made it all about yourself. You keep saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. Well, we're to decrease so that he increases. Everything about our life should say, look at him. Wow. (laughs) It's not me. Let me tell you about the real me. I tell people, don't thank me. I know the real me. He's not such a good guy. It's Christ. It's Christ in me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's pure gift. Everything is pure gift. It is he who works in us to will and to do according to his pleasure. He does it. When we start saying, look at me, we're starting to take his glory. We're touching his glory, which is one of the worst things we could possibly do. The Apostle Paul said, there but by the grace of God go I. I'm just like everybody. He said this, all my righteous acts are as filthy rags. Everything I thought was so important about how am I supposed to live, I was a Pharisee, a Pharisee, born in the right family, I had a maid in the religious world, I was somebody, and he says, now I look at it, and I go, that was pure junk. He is everything. And I don't care how much I suffer for it. I'm going to make him known. And I will rejoice in my suffering because it shows the world I belong to him. I'm willing to take it because he is so worthy. He says, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. They can make all the noise. They can sing the loudest in the group. Their teachings are human traditions. They have let go of the commands of God and holding on to human traditions, which is is the same thing as saying, I'm going to do these things I think God should be happy with, even though he hasn't said so, but I'm going to let go of the things that he has said. That's not important. 
That's only what he says. See, they also did this. Jesus said, you know, you, you tithe the dill and the cumin, all these spices. You want to tithe, but you neglect the greater things, which is to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God as part of the whole person of who you are and what you represent. This is what I think we've lost is what love. Paul says, if I speak in the tongue of men and angels, but I have not love, I got nothing. Love is the fulfillment of the law. It's about loving you above everything because you have poured your love in me. I can't do it on my own. Because he first loved us. And you pour your love into us. And you come and you live inside of us. And you empower us to live in a, in a spiritual, powerful way that we don't have on our own. It's all you. And Jesus said too, they will know that you're my disciples by the way you love one another. But not that person. <laughs> no, it's a, no, it's that person, just come here and give me a hug. You know, everybody needs a hug. I need a love that's real. That's what they need to see. They need to see a faith that's real, a love that's real, the real deal. He says, nothing outside can defile a person by going into them. It's not an outward in, it's an inward out. Rather, it's what comes out of the heart that defiles a person. All those things that is less, sexual immorality, envy, greed, slander, it's because the heart's bad. And that's what's coming out. But he wants to fix the heart. When the heart's right, it just radiates. It starts going boom, boom. I got to get to the outside. Boom, boom. Now it's coming out my mouth. Man, you're amazing. What can I do for you? Boom. Comes out my hands. Come here, give me a hug. Boom. It comes out. I lay down my life. I lift you high. I see people, I got eyes now that see people just like the way he saw me in my brokenness. I said, they need Jesus just like I did. They're not bad people. They just need help. Living with integrity is always inside out. And when that true good inside gets out, people are going to see it. They're going to go, something is wonderfully different about you. What are you doing? How do you get there? And say, oh, Jesus, let me introduce you to my friend who loved me when I was not lovable, who blessed me, who helped me, who picked me up and set my feet upon a rock who said, I'm to die for. Who says, I am the object of his affection. And he wants me so much. So here's the good part. Anybody ready for a good part? As I live with integrity in my relationship with Jesus, my life will witness to the grace of God. He can take someone like John Byer and set him free. Amen. He was a mess. Remember, did I tell you the story? Playing softball when I was younger, some of you haven't heard it, but I want to say, do you know who the last one who was picked in our neighborhood softball games? John Byer. No, the person after, before me. Oh. <laughs> I was a mess. I didn't know who I was, why I was here. It's just, it was hard. But God's grace found me, lifted me up. That's how he shows his glory. God's grace found a Saul and made him a Paul. That's what God's grace does. It's all pure gift. It's nothing we can say, well, he saw potential in me. No, I didn't see potential in me. I don't know anybody else who could have. 
His grace just said, I want you. And I forgive you and I bless you and I give you everything you need. Again, Paul says there, but by the grace of God go I. He says, by the grace I am, I am what I am. It's not me. It's all him. Man, we got something to testify about. Secondly, as I live with integrity in my relationship with Jesus, my life will witness to the love of God. Do you know why I smile so much? He loves me. That's what love does. It makes us smile. You see, God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, that's when Christ died for us. His love is not based on being a good enough person. Well, I will love you if only you will do this. No, his love is just, I just love you. You can't earn it. It's, it's just always there. He wants us all, no matter how close or how far we are away. It's his great love. And when I'm living in it, it shows the world how great his love is. And it's the love of Christ that's now in me that compels me to no longer live for myself, but for him who died for me and was raised again. His love, he did it all because he loves me. That's what it shows when I have integrity with my relationship with him. I'm not saying, Lord, you know, you got to forgive me because you died for me and I'm still going to live this life over here because I love this world. That's duplicity. And it says, it tells, it tells everybody, oh, those Christians are really all about the world. They're trying to control me. They're trying to manipulate me. They're trying to get my stuff. They're, they're trying to make me do things. And so I say, no, it's an invitation from the God of the universe who says, just come with me. I got everything you could ever desire. And you'll find that it's really just me. Because when this world is over, it's just me. And I'm here for you. Because I love you and I want you. Lastly, as I live with integrity in my relationship with Jesus, my life will witness to the power of God. To the grace of God that he could take someone like me and turn me around. Same with you. The love of God that he actually wanted to do and he always does. He will never change his mind about how much he loves us. But the power of God is that power to walk in him despite this world. Where we experience more than we can ask or imagine because it's his power at work within us. That when we're going through a hard time, we're still giving him thanks and praise. I love 1 Thessalonians 5. This is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Always, all the time. Because when I'm not, I'm actually saying, you're no good. It's this world. It's this thing over here. And I'm not getting my way. And you're nothing because you're not doing what I want you to do. You see, if I'm not rejoicing, everything is pure gift. Everything is going to be right in the end. He's always working things for good. I don't have to worry about a thing. You make this so easy, Lord. <laughs> I don't have to worry about nothing. I'm passing through. I'm going to die. I'm... You're going to die. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You're probably going to suffer. It's okay. How many of you suffered when you were born? You hardly noticed it, did you? <laughs> Mama did it all. She knew. She could tell you the story. You see, we're going to be birthed out to a whole other world. It's how we come through because it was never about this world. It's always about Him. And that's where He's leading us to, to know Him and His power that lives within us. You have more power than you can imagine. You can say to the mountain, be moved and be thrown into the sea. Why? Him who has all power and authority lives in you. He gives you power and authority. That's why we pray. We expect God to heal, to make whole. 
Again, this past week, I was just blown away. But I prayed for a guy in church telling me his, his knee was hurting. He was sitting in the pew. So I got down on my knee and I just said a short, simple prayer. He'll knee, be, be made anew, be made whole. Dysfunction, get out in Jesus' name. And then I went home because it was 8.30 at night and I hate being at church that late. I've been there all day. But I didn't think anything of it. A week, a month later, he's back in church and he says, oh, by the way, when you prayed for me, my knee got better. And he was telling his wife about it. But you see, it wasn't me. It's his power. It's his greatness. It's his glory. You see, when we're walking in this way of integrity, say, Lord, it's just you. And I want you. I want more of you. He's drawn to that. And he shows up and he shows off. He heals all of our diseases. He forgives all of our sins. He wants to come in and do a remake, a remodel. How many have ever done a remodel? That sounds like the worst job in the world. <laughs> it's, it's second worst to moving. Because you've got to move out and then you've got to move in. It's, it's all terrible. But anyways... But you can do it with joy in the Lord. But he wants to do that work in us. And all we got to do is surrender. Have your way. It's a song we just sang. Get rid of the tradition, the things that's wrong thinking. All this junk, move it out of the way. It's really what John the Baptist came to do. It says, Jesus is here. That mountain's got to go. It's standing in the way. That valley's got to go. It's keeping you from him. That crooked way, that's got to become straight because it'll take you on a detour. You're going to miss the boat. That rough place has to become smooth so you're not tripped up and fall on your face. Make way for the Lord because he wants to come in. So Lord Jesus, give us a heart of integrity. Give us clean hands in a pure heart. Amen? Amen. 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 Good word. Time to live with integrity. You know, I'll share with the first service with um, Mr. Bob at Sozo. This man told me before he even met me he told me, he said, I know you better than you know yourself. Christy, remember that? I didn't know what he was talking about. But he shared something with me. And when his pastor was preaching, and I heard this message for the third time, is that we are, we are as a people, we are as a sick as our secrets. I didn't know what he was talking about. He said every secret, he used a window pane, a window pane, put it in four sections. And he put four different sections of your, your life in it. And whatever parts of the lives that it is, you have to see what part of it that you're willing to share with everybody. And I was thinking, what are you talking about? And he told me, you're sick as your secrets. Meaning that Whatever it is that you're hiding from people, you're sick. You need healing. I mean, you can be in good, perfect, come to church every Sunday. Sick. Secrets. And the enemy, Satan, has a hold on us. When we do that, he has full control of us. Because now we're no longer free. Secrets keep us in bondage. You can't, we can't live on one side one day and one side the other. It don't work that way. I've tried it and it don't work. I was your guinea pig, so don't do it. <laughs> but we're as sick as our secrets. Clean on the inside, clean on the outside. Pastor Hughley, you tell Michael the only thing he needs is a couple bars and he can make a new rap song called Clean on the Inside, Clean on the Outside. 
<laughs> but that's the way we should live. That's the way. And guess what? He's given us the way to do that. He's given us the power through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. He's not asking us something that's hard for us. The enemy make it seem like it's hard. Those secrets, once they're exposed and out of there, can't nobody say nothing or do nothing to you. I see so many people on television that's being exposed because people have know their secrets. But once you tell your secret, you take all the ammunition away from the enemy, and we can live free. And I'm telling you guys, that's nothing like living free. People can lie on you. People can talk about you. But as long as you know that you know that you know that you are in line with him, it's all good. Amen? Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray for the church. Powerful message to be set free. Powerful message to be set free. Powerful message to be set free. Walking in integrity. Practicing what we preach. Man. Let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank you for this word on today, Father. Help us as a body of Christ to walk in that integrity. That there's no secrets in our life. That whatever it is that's hidden, that we try to cover up. Father, we just give it to you. We rather give it to you out of obedience than being exposed. So, Father, we come before you right now today as a body of Christ. Father, we know time is winding up. And it's time, it's go time for us to be in line with you, walking in integrity, that when the world see us, that they will see you because of the way we live our life. So, Father, we just pray right now for those that are having birthdays and anniversaries. Father, continue to bless them in the very best way. Father, we pray for those that are in the hospital that need your healing touch, Father. Touch right now. You said in your word, by your stripes we are healed. So we stand on your word, Lord. Father, we pray for the world that we live in, Father, this corrupt world that as we look around, Father, we don't see too much integrity. Father, we as a body of Christ, help us to be that light, Father, that when people see us, they see us walking in integrity, that our light may shine through in our homes, on our jobs, in our communities, throughout. So, Father, we just thank you and we bless you. We close out the prayer, Father, with that prayer that you taught us to pray in case there was something we may have missed, Father. And that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I pray that today's message spoke to you about your life, about how you're living and what you're believing and how you're living in the grace of God with honesty and integrity and in the love of God and in the power of God according to what his word says. If we can be a blessing to you, in that part, if you need to learn more, talk about how this really has worked out, or if you have issues that you need resolution in your mind, give us a call. Our number is 501-525-0322. And I want to invite you to join us live on Sunday morning. We're, we're live at 8.30 and 11 o'clock Central Time here in Hot Springs. And our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. So it's time to go. Time to go with integrity time to lift up Jesus.
so people are drawn to him. We'll see you next time.